Okay, so hey everyone, in this video, we are going to understand how can we debug Node.js code, all right? So when we work with any kind of uh, code editor, for example, VS Code, it comes with an inbuilt uh, debugger, right? You, as you see over here, so this has a debugger, which uh, is actually very underrated. So in this video, because it's uh, very complicated and very difficult to understand, and in this video, I'm just going to simplify things, how exactly we can apply breakpoints and just debug what exactly is the variable actually containing and we want to check line by line what exact code is it actually executing and what code is not being executed okay all that we can just check by this debug tool that we have within vs code so we can just uh, get started so the first step is that if we are using typescript within our node.js backend project we need to make sure one thing is actually enabled from our ts config file so if we go back to our file tree and go to the ts config.json so we need to make sure that we are enabling the source map property over here okay so it is um, somewhere over here so we need to ensure that this is true okay so previously it will be commented out so we just need to uncomment this and set this to true okay. our debugger will not understand our typescript code so all of our code will be compared to normal javascript and then it will be interpreted by the debugger and then it will interpret our javascript code okay so make sure that this is enabled if you are using typescript okay so once you do that we can go to this debug icon on your left side okay over here we just need to configure our debugger to run based on our requirements okay we can just click on the settings icon and change our configuration over here what is our root directory where we are running our main file so whatever we are giving within our package.json right so what is our entry file so basically the main file which is server.js which we need to also add in over here which is uh, in the args list or instead of creating this json file you can just simply go to this debugger icon over here and then we just need to select node.js or if you don't have this over here you can just click on add configuration and uh, we just need to select this particular file if it actually asks you if not we can just uh, you know go here and select node.js once you select node.js it will just give you a list of commands that it has within our package.json file so we had def defined four scripts over here okay so one is start dev test and build so what exactly which script it has to run when it runs our debugger okay so currently we just want to run in dev mode which is actually running the node mon which constantly monitors our file changes so we are going to select dev and then you can just click on this play icon over here okay so once we click that it will just start a new debug terminal instance and then run our actual code over there because since we selected the run dev command so it will run the exact thing so if i click on this icon so now we see that it will open our debug terminal over here and then uh, we are having our server running on port 8080 because that's what we configured within our main file and make sure that this is not a normal terminal this is actually a javascript debug terminal if you don't want to like uh, automatically run this you can also do it manually by selecting from this drop down select javascript debug terminal which is actually only integrated within uh, our id that is vs code and then uh, make sure you are running the dev command over here so once you do that you will get some control icons right at the top okay so one is to play and pause so if you want to uh, continue the line by line execution within our code and one is to go to the next line and one is to step inside that function if it is actually a function so it's called a step into and this is to step out of that function and this is to restart your entire uh, debug terminal so if i click on this it will actually restart all right and then this is to pause or st to stop okay so this will actually disconnect so this will uh, kill our terminal and we are back to normal all right so let's go ahead and start this once again and uh, let's start debugging our very first code okay so we are going to debug the login user functionality that we have defined within our uh, controllers user controller so we can just apply breakpoints okay so in any code editor you can just go to the left side of these line numbers and you can just see there click to add a breakpoint so we can just add a breakpoint over here so whenever we call this function so as it executes line by line so our control will stop at this particular line okay so it won't execute further so it will just wait for us to continue as we have this control buttons over here so it will execute our code line by line since javascript is single threaded it has to go 
across every single line so whenever it finds a breakpoint it will stop at that particular point okay and uh, yeah let's go ahead and just give this a test by calling this login user function so for that we have an api which is defined that is at localhost 80 8080 slash api slash user slash login so in the body i am passing the email and password so once i click on send our control should reach over here and it should pause okay so let's see if that actually works so now if i click on send as you see that our uh, line of execution actually pauses at this particular point and now if you go back to our postman you see that this actually never stops okay and it waits for us to continue the execution step and then um, you know finish the request response and the best part about this debugger is if you just hover on these variables it will just give us the entire object which we can just peek on it okay so if i just uh, hover on this request object it gives us all the properties that it actually has and we can just check what all value it does contain okay so we are not currently interested in that we are currently interested in the email and password what is it, what exactly is sent from the request body so currently this line is not yet executed so even if you hover it doesn't actually give us the information so for that we need to go to the next line so to go to the next line you can just click on this particular button called as step over so even though if it is a function it will not go inside that function it will just go to that next line of it okay so if you want it to go to the inside function we can just click on this step into and then check what exactly is the function doing step by step inside that function so we are currently not interested in that so we can just click on step over and now if we hover on the email so this is the exact email that i'm actually passing from my uh, postman that is test at test.com and also the password one two three four five six okay so just by hovering you can just have a look or you can if you have a look at the side panel on the left so this will give us a list of all the variables so far it has been declared okay so inside javascript memory so all of our variables will be declared and all the, over there it lists all of them okay whatever it is we have email password so far so now if we execute this so this will actually call the schema that we have actually defined and parses it whether if our email and password are in the right format so now if i continue this you see that we have another data property defined within our memory and we check all the properties that our zords schema actually parses it so one is we have success true and then the email password so instead of you know uh, putting console logs every single time and then checking so we just need to keep logging in so this is the best way right so we can just hover on these and then get to know the entire variable history all right so once we do that we can now just check if data dot success is even defined so if it is actually true then we just uh, you know enter this block if not not so currently the value of success is true so we don't enter this block so since we have applied a not operator so it will not go inside this block all right so you see that it goes directly to the next step so now based on the email that is passed it will just fetch the user from our database so if it doesn't exist then it will just return null okay so let's see if it actually exists if the user and if that actually matches the password then it will enter this block so if the password is correct then it will enter this so it did so it will just create a random token for access token and refresh token so if we just have a look so these are the actual tokens that is generated access token and refresh token and now this will call the create function which will actually create the key pairs within our mongodb store okay for this particular user so if you remember from the, within the classes that i have taken so now if you want to go inside this function and just see what exactly is happening so you can either click on the step into so this will go inside this function create function okay and here it will call the key store model and create all of that okay so we just don't want to go inside further because this is already a built-in model uh, module which is from mongoose and we do not want to check that so we can just currently step out okay so if you want you can just step out or if you want you can go to the previous file so basically over here and you know add in another breakpoint over here and click on continue okay so if you click on this continue it will go to the next breakpoint if it is actually there anything is there so if it if it actually consists so it will go and stop over there okay so if it doesn't consist then it will go ahead and execute the rest of the code without stopping okay so and you can also have a look at the list of breakpoints that you have defined within your code on the left panel so you see that within the breakpoints tab you we have currently two breakpoints and it is currently at the last breakpoint this particular breakpoint and over here again if you want we can just get into this function and check whatever the methods it has been called so again step over that and then all right so it will just execute line by line how exactly it is going so what pattern 
it is going across and then we can just check if refresh token is existing so it does exist then we actually are returning it okay so now in order to come out we can just you know put a breakpoint over here and then uh, you know click on this play button so this will go and stop at the next breakpoint and these are all the variables so far it has collected so you can just have a look at this and then we can go to the next line so our cookies are set and then this will return as a response okay so now if i just click on this so this will end our execution so once we have finished debugging we can just click on this play button and this will execute our entire code and give us the response so now if we just go back so we see that we have received our response and this time it has taken about nine minutes because since nine minutes we are actually uh, debugging it okay so that um, is the particular debugging process how exactly we can just do it all right so we can also explore other um, options or features that debugger provides us so these are the list of breakpoints and also whenever we have uh, uh, come across an exception like uh, if there is an any error that has been thrown so it will just go ahead and um, you know catch that exception and it will pause at that particular point okay so if i just enable this and clear all the other breakpoints and now just try to give in a like invalid email so let's uh, remove this add symbol and now if i just try to execute so it should basically uh, stop at that particular point so now if i just click on send so you see that it will give us a error from the sort saying that this is the email validation and we are getting a invalid string okay or the invalid email that we have passed in as a message a custom message okay so this actually stops at uh, any uh, caught exception so we are catching the errors right and throwing it right so wherever we see this throw keyword it is actually a caught exception if we do not catch any errors so that is an uncaught exception okay so if you are not actually throwing the error if uh, anything goes wrong then it is an uncaught exception so that is the checkpoint over here so if you want you can just try with this as well so this is the particular error message where you can just see within the terminal itself okay before the response is even sent so if you want you can just cancel this and then we can just go back and fix it which are without even uh, you know sending the response completing the request response cycle okay so this is the features that debugger actually provides us and you can also explore other things which are actually not that important like the watch call stack so where it actually paused uh, what is the uh, functions that it is currently executing at what particular uh, stack okay so and these are all the other stuff which which you can actually try exploring so now let us try to understand a real world problem which i actually faced and i tried to solve that okay so if you have understood the entire debugging process you can just feel free to skip this particular uh, video from here onwards so if you have still not understood and how exactly i found that bug and i'm just going to show you that process all right so inside this to-do routes i have just defined a particular route to fetch all the to-dos as long as the user is an admin and the user is logged in okay so now if i just test this particular route within my postman currently i am logged in all right so even though if i just click on send i am getting permission denied okay so the reason is i am just signed in as a normal user and not an admin so that is why i am getting permission denied but later if i just try to debug i wasn't actually finding what exactly went wrong all right so later i realized that this particular route needs an admin access so for that i just used the debugger mode and went inside that authentication middleware how exactly it is functioning and comparing different different values and then found out that this actually needs a um, admin role so let us go across that uh, same process and just try to debug how exactly we actually wanted a admin user to access this route but we are getting a normal user that is why we are getting this error message so to debug that we can go inside another function that is to actually insert a role within the request object saying that we need to um, have admin access to access this role so sorry access this route so we can just put a breakpoint over here and then finally we can just go to the authorization middleware and over there we can you know put a breakpoint over here make sure you're not putting breakpoint um, directly to this function call so make sure it is actually inside the function all right so currently we have applied three breakpoints and now let's go ahead and uh, make a request so now if i just click on send so it should go ahead and stop at that particular uh, breakpoint so now if we go to the next line and check if the what is the role request so over here it is actually the entire request object itself so currently we do not have any property called as role codes if we just have a look so now if we execute this next piece of code so this will actually contain the property of current role code so if we just hover on this 
and uh, just check for that particular function there it is so current role code so this basically is an admin role so we require an admin role that is set within our user object okay so now we call next so this will actually go to the next line okay so once the role codes are set it will now go to the middleware since there there is where i have added a breakpoint so now it we can it it actually compares different values of uh, user roles so here this contains uh, if you just hover on this what exactly are the roles that are required so if you just uh, click on this uh, or this target so we see that this is the id so which is actually the role id which is required and these are the current role codes so if we just hover on this and uh, just try to look at the value so this is an admin all right so we are having all these three properties so it should not give us an error so we can just click on next line so it will not execute this so now we are fetching all the roles within our uh, particular role model and checking if the current role codes are actually there within it okay so now if i just execute this particular code and just check, check the roles so if we just have a look underscore doc is our actual uh, uh, role object created in mongodb all right so this has a code of admin so this is actually required for us to access that route so now we have fetched all the roles that are required so we can now go to the next line and now we can just uh, map across for every role and get only the ids since uh, we are comparing different mongodb ids so that is why so now let's uh, go to the next line and this goes inside this for loop where we have the uh, roles array right within our request object so if you just hover on this uh, this is actually an array of object ids so if you just uh, expand this target so now we just uh, loop across every single thing and just check if we are actually matching the roles okay so now for every role within this so basically the first user role itself so now basically this role ids which are actually an array of uh, uh, role ids so this is the role id that is required okay so that ends in bd5 so now let us go to the next step and just check if those actually match so if this role ids so basically this which ends in bd5 includes with this actual user role so you see that this is ending with bd2 and not bd5 so that is the reason it doesn't go inside this block and then uh, it goes to the next iteration okay so if we just uh, click on the next line it doesn't make the authorized flag to true and now if i just click on next so it should now give this a forbidden error so now the current value of authorized is false if you just hover on this it says false so it should actually throw the error so that is where i actually found that we actually need an admin access to access this route and not the actual user okay so this is just a very trivial example how exactly you can just debug um, different parts of your code and different functions and get the exact variable names and then compare with the actual expected ones and check if they are actually the expected uh, variables or not so that is uh, how you can just do it and yeah so this we we don't have to do it we can just directly click on play and now it gives us the result that's why we are getting permission denied so this is the exact error message that we have defined over here which actually executed this line of code so this is how you can just execute steps line by line using the debugger from node.js which is actually built in any, any uh, code editors such as vs code all right so yeah that, i guess that concludes the video so i hope you liked it how exactly you can debug any kind of node.js code line by line so make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel for some more amazing content just like this and also within the series of uh, node.js backend architecture which is on ongoing so that is it for this video thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in yet another exciting video in this uh, node.js backend uh, series architecture series